President of the United States makes his second wartime inspection tour of military training camps. United States Marines at one of the great eastern bases pass in review before their Commander-in-Chief. Traveling further south, Mr. Roosevelt sees at first hand the growth and progress of America's vast new military machine. And as his car rolls through camp after camp, there is no pause in the daily routine. Today, the United States is giving its men the best possible training, seeing to it that every soldier is physically fit and completely equipped before he goes into battle. The President views with satisfaction the success of the air training program. All America working to speed the day of victory for the United Nations. The United States Navy aircraft carrier takes aboard Army planes for shipment to one of the fighting fronts. Planes are stored above and below deck. It was from just such a flat top that American bombers carried out their raid on Tokyo a year ago. Now, loading up at sea with oil and ammunition. Machine guns ready, planes ready, and they take off for some new base on land. Navy combining forces to deliver entire squadrons of fighting planes ready for action. forces over North Africa. Americans and British in flying forts, Mitchells and Liberators, clearing the way for new offensives on land. Through a hail of enemy flak, the big ships roar on. Their objective, the Marat Line. Bombers softening up Rommel's Africa Corps with load after load of high explosives. Anti-aircraft fire fails to stop them. The famous Merritt Line, now in British hands. Behind these concrete emplacements, Rommel was expected to make a stand. But Montgomery's guns and his brilliant 8th Army were too much for the Desert Fox. Here, General Alexander, Allied ground chief, and French General Giraud visit the fighting front as British artillery gives the Nazis no rest. Gurkhas advancing. These are the warriors who stormed the Merritt Heights in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Now, in the American sector, United States tanks take their place in the Allied strategy to drive Rommel into the sea. The commander, Lieutenant General Patton, surveys the Axis positions. and placed in the hills open fire. And they have the range, direct hits on Nazi tanks.
The general grins with satisfaction. After early setbacks, his American troops are learning. More big General Sherman type tanks roll up as the advance continues. Now streaming toward the last mountainous barriers to join the magnificent British, Yankee gunners see inspiring evidence of allied superiority over the vaunted German Mark IVs. Engineers, profiting by the experience of the veteran British, learn the deadly business of clearing roads of enemy mines so that infantry columns may safely advance. A Junkers 88 attacks the supply line, bombing the road. Guns, camouflaged in nearby fields, score a hit. Italian prisoners, captured in earlier stages of the fighting. In all, the Allies have taken some 30,000 Axis soldiers since breaching the Merritt Line. A meal of United States Army field rations is quite a banquet for members of the elite German Africa Corps. American Army nurses fly to within sound of the guns to evacuate wounded by air, speeding stretcher cases to base hospitals well in the rear, flying the wounded back over country that would take days to travel by land. Eisenhower, Allied commander in North Africa, visits General Patton's frontline headquarters as the combined Allied force bottle up the Nazis in the northeast corner of Tunisia. The Battle of Tunisia enters its final phase. 